You all know about the African Serengeti, one of the most awe-inspiring wildernesses in the world, where buffalo, rhinos and elephants march across the vast plains, being stalked by hyenas, leopards and lions. But what if I told you that all these animals were once present in Europe? In this video, we'll take a look at the wildlife that lived alongside our ancestors on southern Europe's Serengeti, the closest thing to a South European Serengeti that exists today, and what southern Europe could look like in the future as rewilding progresses. Just to note, this video will specifically discuss the subtropical region of Europe, from Iberia through Italy and the Balkans, as the potential for rewilding in this climate is different from temperate Europe. Before we dive in, I'd like to take a moment to tell you a little about Rewild at Heart, the sponsors of this video. Founded around a campfire by nature lovers Paul and Ray, Rewild at Heart creates stunning, eco-friendly products while actively supporting global rewilding initiatives. Every design from t-shirts to backpacks features original nature-inspired art by Ray, and every woodcraft piece from bug hotels and frog logs to axe wall mounts is handmade by Paul using locally sourced or reclaimed wood. Their products are made to order to avoid waste, using natural, sustainable and reclaimed materials wherever possible. Best of all, a portion of profits from every sale is donated directly to rewilding and conservation organisations. You can support rewilding and wear your impact with Rewild at Heart. Use code NERD10 for 10% off on all products or follow the link in the description below. Better again, this code actually stacks up with their sign up, spin and win promotion so you could get up to 30% off. Now. Back to our video. Around 54,000 years ago, Homo sapiens arrived in Europe and would have encountered wildlife as impressive as Africa or India today. The biggest animal on the European Serengeti was the European straight tusked elephant. Achieving weights of up to 13 tons, it was far larger than any living elephant and likely the second largest elephanted of all time behind the closely related Indian straight tusked elephant. The keystone grazer of Europe would have been the aurochs the ancestor to domesticated cattle. Though sadly extinct in the wild form today, there are several projects doing an amazing job of backbreeding primitive domestic cattle breeds to resemble their wild ancestors in behaviour and appearance. It's believed that the aurochs were the grazers that really shaped the grasslands of Europe, equivalent to the American bison and African wildebeest. As wildebeest are often followed by herds of zebra today, the aurochs grazed alongside the tarpan, Europe's wild horse. Though the tarpan, the ancestor of domestic horses, are sadly extinct, they were in fact a subspecies of wild horse, very closely related to Chevalsky's horse, which lives on. Southern Europe was also home to the European wild ass, sometimes classed as a distinct species and often as a subspecies of the living Asiatic wild ass, which has been introduced to certain rewilding projects as a proxy for their European cousins. European bison were present in parts of Southern Europe, but certainly not very far south. Their cousin though, the steppe bison, was indeed present throughout much of the region. Alongside cattle, elephants and equines were rhinos. Two species were present in southern Europe. Merck's rhino, which was a browser, meaning it ate mostly trees and shrubs, was only present in the northern parts of the region. But the narrow-nosed rhino, the grazer, was present throughout southern Europe. There were even hippos present in southern Europe until around 30,000 years ago. Hippopotamus amphibious, the very same species that lives on in Africa today. And of course, beavers, fallow deer, roe deer, red deer, wild boar, chamois and Iberian ibex lived alongside the extinct megafauna and play hugely important roles in southern Europe to this day. Hunting the herbivores were cave lions, an extinct lion species that was larger than the lions we know from Africa and India today. But modern lions actually lived in southern Europe as well and were found in Greece up until at least the 3rd century. Leopards too were present across southern Europe. To me it's amazing to think European lynx lived alongside leopards and lions when humans first arrived. Alongside grey wolves and red foxes, which of course are still present, were European dole, a pack hunting wild dog that can still be found in Asia today. Though they are just one third the size of wolves, they've been known to hunt gaur and water buffalo. Golden jackals, however, are actually a fairly new arrival in Europe, seemingly benefiting from their ability to thrive alongside humans where other species struggle. They've been present in the Balkans for about 7,000 years, but turned up in Spain for the first time, just last year. Alongside the brown bears that are still present in southern Europe, there were cave bears, which were a little larger, though mainly herbivorous and found almost exclusively in mountain ranges. Predators that have no modern relatives in Europe today, 
but were present for much of man's time there, were both the spotted hyena, specifically the cave hyena subspecies, and the striped hyena. Of course, large predatory birds were abundant also, like the largest bird of prey in the old world, the Cineris vulture, the second largest owl in the world, the Eurasian eagle owl, and the bird known to take the largest prey of any bird, the golden eagle. So, we've seen the herbivores that shaped the savannas of Europe and the predators that hunted them. Picture the African savanna, but instead of wildebeest and zebra, there were aurochs and tarpan. Instead of leopards pulling antelope into umbrella acacia trees, they pulled fallow deer up the boughs of an oak, while lions dragged aurochs into thickets of scrub protected by the sharp briars of hawthorn and blackberry. Europe's wild spaces are being expanded and animals are coming back. But what is the best example of South European Serengeti that can be found today? In terms of diversity of large herbivores and predators, it has to be the Rhodopi Mountains of Bulgaria and Greece, spanning almost 15,000 square kilometers. Rewilding Europe manage a 2,500 square kilometer site in the region and have done amazing work there. They introduced bison in 2013 and the herd has been growing steadily They've introduced conic horses and rhodopi shorthorn cattle as proxies for their wild ancestors, more than 900 red deer and 120 fallow deer, which has helped the native predator and scavenger, particularly vulture, populations to grow. All four European vultures are present in the region. Rewilding Europe began introducing Cineris vultures in 2022, which completed the set. Also present in the region are Europe's three large predators, wolves, brown bears and lynx though lynx are only present in small numbers. Roe deer, wild boar, chamois, capercaillie and mouflon, which are actually a non-native ancient feral sheep. Other predators include golden jackals, red foxes, badgers, wild cats and countless birds of prey, peregrine falcons, white-tailed eagles and golden eagles, to name a few. The wetlands and grassland forest mosaics of the Rhodopi Mountains are home to nearly every large animal still present in southern Europe today, only really missing the beaver, which of course is a vital ecosystem engineer. But could we restore the levels of biodiversity and ecosystem function that were present in Southern Europe when humans first arrived? Should we? Well, restoring missing animals is key to sequestering carbon, as can be seen by the reintroduction of bison in Romania and beavers wherever they go, reducing the frequency and intensity of wildfires, a growing problem in Southern Europe, restoring biodiversity and preventing further extinctions, which is vital given that the current extinction crisis is wiping out species approximately 55 times faster than the extinction that killed off the dinosaurs. Not to mention the fact that humans are the main reason for the extinction of most megafauna since arriving in Europe and have completely prevented the recolonization of megafauna and apex predators. Difficult for elephants, rhinos and big cats to recolonize Europe from Asia as they did in the past when their populations and distributions are only a fraction of what they once were. What if somewhere in Southern Europe we were to restore a true European Serengeti by expanding current wildernesses, connecting them with wildlife corridors, reintroducing lost species and boosting wildlife tourism and the economy of the area in the process? Of course, we could start by ensuring the full clade of large herbivores and predators that are already present in Southern Europe are present in the region as smaller species tend to find a way in anyway. Wild ass from Asia would be a relatively easy reintroduction as they have been successfully reintroduced to Ukraine and plans are already in place for a reintroduction to Iberia. A harder reintroduction would be the rhino. The species most closely related to the extinct European rhinos is the Sumatran rhino, the woolliest and smallest rhino alive today, though it would be difficult to obtain a breeding population as they are critically endangered. There is a captive breeding program for Sumatran rhinos in Indonesia which has seen an improvement in reproduction rates in recent years thanks to a better understanding of the species. And with the latest improvements in animal reproduction technology, who knows what the future holds. The Sumatran rhino is a browser though, and given that Europe also had a grazing rhino, perhaps a grazing rhino could be introduced. Of the two living, the Indian rhino is much more closely related to the European rhinos, closer in size, and also quite common in European zoos, so would likely be a better proxy. Along with rhinos, an ideal reintroduction would be elephants. Elephants are biodiversity making machines and perhaps the best examples of ecosystem engineers in the world after humans and beavers, so it could be an amazing introduction to Europe. If humans weren't in the way, there would have been nothing to stop elephants recolonizing Europe from Asia, so perhaps we should assist them. 
Hippos are amazing for African biodiversity, with many species relying on them for the amount of highly fertile poop they produce in Africa's wetlands and their grazing of wetland habitats, but they are known for their aggression, so reintroducing them to countries unaccustomed to their presence would no doubt prove controversial and complex, even if amazingly worthwhile. Attempting to reintroduce rhinos, elephants and hippos to southern Europe might raise some eyebrows, but perhaps the most controversial reintroduction of all would be the large predators. Dole, spotted hyenas, striped hyenas, lions and leopards were all present in southern Europe and still live on in the world today. Apex predators play hugely important roles in their ecosystems and people across most of the global south have found ways to coexist with them. But of course, there is a fear around them. Rewilding has been hugely beneficial for nature and in areas like southern Europe where land abandonment and the collapse of rural communities is happening on a massive scale, rewilding has shown to greatly boost local economies and increase the number of job opportunities. With that said, some of these reintroductions seem unimaginable at present and animals should only ever be reintroduced to an area after extensive trials and research prove they will benefit native ecosystems. But can you imagine a Europe where elephants shape woodlands filled with songs of blackbirds and robins once more, where a hyena clan steals a bison carcass from a pack of grey wolves, where a rhino sends a brown bear fleeing to protect her calf. Can you imagine South Europe's Serengeti? If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. And don't forget to check out Rewild at Heart and get yourself a discount using the code NERD10 or the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching.